tutorial will dye cotton fabric with cherries. According to the California Cherries website, sweet cherries originated in Asia Minor in the fertile areas between the Black and Caspian Seas and were likely brought to Europe by birds. Greeks and Romans cultivated cherries. English colonists brought them to North America and Spanish missionaries to California. Pioneers carried cherries westward to prime growing areas in Washington, Oregon, and California. Cherry blossoms, or sakura, are celebrated in Japan and in Washington, D.C. Cherry trees, Prunus cerecis varieties, have been cultivated commercially in California for decades. Cherry trees have naturalized in the San Francisco Bay Area, and their delicate pink blossoms are a beautiful part of the spring display. I have access to cherries from a self-seeded tree that grows by the curb. Its red leaves and round petals indicate that it is a plum cherry and not a true cherry. For now, I'm identifying it as a prunus species. My research indicates that the fruit yields a pink dye. For this project, I used basic dye equipment and a well-ventilated workspace. Since we are accustomed to cooking cherries, I decided to extract the dye in the kitchen. I thought it smelled delicious, like a cherry pie, but my husband found it quite overpowering. So keep in mind the sensibilities of those in your household. I used a soaking pot, a dye pot, a heat source, and a candy thermometer to keep the dye bath at a consistent temperature. I also used a strainer and cheesecloth to remove the cherries from the dye bath. The weight of fabric was about 11 ounces, which includes two dish towels, two napkins, two large handkerchiefs, two small handkerchiefs, and one dishwashing cloth. The fabric was scoured and mordanted using a gallnut mordant followed by a bath of 15% WOF alum and 2% soda ash as a brightener. I collected about 23 ounces of cherries, so the WOF percent for 11 ounces of fabric was about 209%. I gathered the cherries in early June and used them right away. The supplies for dyeing include 23 ounces of the cherries, one half lemon, a gallon of water, plus more as needed, and 11 ounces of prepared cotton fabric, scoured, gallnut mordant, and alum brightener. For safety, use a face mask and rubber gloves. Let's get started. First, extract the dye using our basic process. Rinse the cherries to remove dust and insects. Add the cherries to a gallon of water in a stainless steel pot. Stir in juice of one half lemon and its rind. Ideally, bring to 160 degrees and simmer for an hour. My equipment isn't that controllable, so I typically cook between 180 and 200 degrees. Your color results may differ if you can maintain the lower temperature. Soak the cherries in lemon rind for three days. Strain the cherries out of the dye bath using cheesecloth. Return the dye bath to the stainless steel pot. The resulting liquor is a nice red. I tested the pH to learn more. It registers a three, which is quite acidic and may be from the lemon. Dye the fabric using our basic process. Add wet prepared fabric and simmer for an hour, keeping the temperature between 180 and 200 degrees. Stir periodically to make sure the dye is distributed as evenly as possible. Let soak for an hour or overnight. For saturated color, I let it soak for three days. Squeeze out excess dye from the fabric. Rinse the fabric in cool water until the water runs clear. Run the fabric through the washing machine's rinse and spin cycles using cold water. Let the fabric air dry. Two weeks later, wash the fabric in a pH neutral soap like Synthropol and hang to dry. The resulting color is beige with a slight hint of pink in certain light. During the dye process, some fabrics seem to take color better than others, but all seem to lose color during the rinse cycle. This could be because the alum brightener was too weak, or that I just need to use more cherries. 
I can try adjusting these factors. Or maybe next time, I'll just use the cherries for a delicious cherry pie.